My name is Raleigh Duguir Amix. It's been a labor of love, a lifelong dream to put this major collection together. And now the moment has come that I have an opportunity to share this dream with others. A major reason why the Raleigh de Geer Amish collection is important is the provenance, that proof of lineage. I ended up in the Washington, D.C. area and I was a messenger to J. Edgar Hoover. It was the greatest job in the world, meeting John F. Kennedy, meeting Lyndon Johnson. And then I dreamed of this concept of meeting people that had known great people. And so I thought, there must be a lot of people around Washington, D.C that knew great people, but they don't talk about it. I'm speaking of upstairs, backstairs people, the maids, the butlers, the valets, the doorman, the electrician at the White House, who cuts the grass at the White House. Almost all items in my collection are items obtained by me from people that had direct contact with important people playing an important role in American history. When I think back of the presidency of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. It wound up that I must have known at least 20 people that had served Franklin Delano Roosevelt over a period of time. One of the great, great stories and objects in my collection is this ivory handle cane that is not just symbolic of FDR, but was so often used by him. It came to me directly from the valet and the valet's family, Arthur Prettyman, that served Franklin Delano Roosevelt for oh so many years. There's no servant in the White House that is as close to a president day in and day out as the valet. Another iconic FDR item was the actual top hat, formal, beaver skin, with his name emblazoned twice in gold, Franklin Delano Roosevelt on the interior. Once in the white silk top, once in the leather hat band, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Interestingly, Franklin Delano Roosevelt wore a formal hat three different inaugurations. My understanding is the other two formal hats are in institutions. This is the last remaining formal top hat of Franklin Delano Roosevelt's ever worn at one of his inaugurations. As to another extraordinary historical piece, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's formal cape. I often thought, why did he wear a cape? Other than it gave him a stately presidential look, I think it went beyond that. The president was paralyzed from the waist down. By wearing a cape, he had more flexibility of using his arms to balance himself on a lectern or on the rail of a ship. The Holy Bible of Franklin Roosevelt with his name emblazoned in gold on the outside, that left the White House because when the president suddenly died, Eleanor Roosevelt had the presence of mind within a day after she returned to the White House, permitted to these favored servants, take what you want now. Take what you want now because if you don't, the rest is going to Hyde Park and you'll never see it again. I don't want to say he was like God to me, but I knew that Dwight David Eisenhower was way, way up there. Eisenhower wrote a book at the end of his life called At Ease, Stories I Like to Tell My Friends. And in that book, he mentions Sergeant Mooney as a man indispensable to me in my life. And I was fortunate enough to be associated with the Mooney family, one of the most personal and iconic items of General Eisenhower, straight from Sergeant Mooney's family, Eisenhower's Rolex. The 18 karat gold Rolex, the 150,000th ever manufactured by them. The Mooney's didn't even remember that Rolex even presented it to the general. It was actually sitting up on Sergeant Mooney's dresser in his bedroom. Eisenhower, who was an inveterate chain smoker, was looking for some way that he might relax. Churchill suggests, try painting. Eisenhower had never done this. And so he did in the 40s. And he got better and better. One of the greatest things he ever painted 
was this cottage in England, 15 miles south of London. And Eisenhower decides that as a gift for Sergeant Mooney, he wanted to paint where they lived together, where all these World War plans were done. The uh, historic magnificence of this original oil painting by General Eisenhower cannot be overstated. It's World War II. It's his headquarters where he lived and where he planned both Torch, the invasion of North Africa, and later Overlord, which equates to D-Day or Normandy. And on the back of it, Eisenhower did something he never did with his original oil paintings. 50% of the verso of the painting of Eisenhower, he has written in detail what he's doing and why he did it and what it's about. Incredible, and you can see Operation Overlord and Torch written in Eisenhower's hand. Wow. And data, the yeah. events, the year of each operation. Fantastic. 1942, 1944. One of the most exciting things that I've ever come across in all my years of collecting, the leather jacket worn by General Eisenhower during World War II. Imagine what he was thinking while he wore that jacket. He had torch on his mind, the invasion of North Africa. He had on his mind Normandy, surely one of the most important John F. Kennedy related items. is a piece of art, by by seven, accomplished by Jacqueline Bouvier Kennedy, the first lady, especially for her husband, the president. Jacqueline Kennedy came into the Oval Office with her easel and painted away right in the Oval Office. This painting is so important because almost always when Jacqueline Kennedy signed her art, she signed it on the front in J, B as in boy K, J, B, K. But on this one, it was totally different. It's signed J, space, T, O, space, J. After the framing, Jacqueline flips it over and writes for Jack. Not only that, we have a photograph of this painting I located 10, 15 years later, sitting in the Oval Office on an easel with JFK and his rocker faced in that direction. I started imagining what could I think of that had never been thought of before, and I thought, aha, every president is a little bit older. That means they don't see so well. That means they need an optometrist. I got on the subway, grabbed the yellow pages, took them with me, I made door-to-door -door stops at every ophthalmologist within a mile or so of the White House. Lo and behold, I wind up with the optician who went back before Abraham Lincoln in the back room in the bowels of that shop that had been a block from the White House was a drawer called Presidential Drawer. Pull it open, a pair of Abraham Lincoln's eyeglasses sitting in the drawer. Now, I do have a favorite set. From a modern point of view, it would be Ronald Reagan, uh, the Woodrow Wilson service plate, Thomas Jefferson. The Lincoln pattern was really so handsome, so well liked, that it was reordered by President Grant. It was reordered later by William McKinley as late as the late 1890s. Well, one of the reasons the porcelain appealed to me was the fact that so few presidents actually had official White House China. So it's a rarity. It's very hard to accumulate unbroken, unshipped quality pieces. The Raleigh de Geer Amex collection has been a labor of love, something I've put my heart and soul into for the last 35 years to bring it to the fruition, the moment that we have captured today. And these rare historical items are for the first time being made available to other collectors that may share the same passion and desire to be a part of American history. Thank you.